All right, so this is genetic modification uh, on GM, as it's also known. You've probably heard of things like GM foods. Um, genetic modification simply means um, adding a gene to an organism. It's not just one gene, of course. What you want is every cell um, to be carrying that gene. Um, because there, there are trillions of cells in, in organisms, it's no good just putting one single gene into a cell. The idea is we pop it in there and we get those um, genes to be replicated and turn up all the time. Remember that a gene is basically a string of DNA. Um, remember DNA being these four chemicals, or these four chemical bases, ACT gene, a few of the bits and bobs. It's the same chemicals, whatever the organism is. All organisms use these four repeating chemicals. So it's not such a big deal to put um, one bit of uh, one bit of DNA into something else. It's going to use. It's like it's like the software. Okay, it's like putting one piece of software onto another computer, it's fine, it runs the same software, it's not a big deal um, to, to technically do. Um, so we can modify quite a few things, we can modify plants, of course GM crops famously, um, a lot of controversy over things like soy at the moment, um, where crops have been modified to become perhaps more disease resistant, or perhaps grow at lower temperatures, frost resistance and so on. Um, and you can put genes in either from other plants or even from animals. Um, doesn't particularly matter because it's this same chemical, just this ACTG repeating sequence. Now the difficult part comes when you actually have to get the um, gene into a cell. You can't simply uh, drop these genes in. So you need something called a vector. And a vector is something that's going to carry the gene for you. And the ones that we'll be interested in occur in, here's a bacterium. And bacteria have um, a big long loop of DNA inside. They don't have a nucleus as such, it's just one big long loop of DNA. But they also have these smaller loops called plasmids. And it's the plasmids that are going to be used as the vectors. Okay. Um, and one specific example, they might not give you this on the exam, they might give you um, something completely different, but the idea is still exactly the same. Um, what you would do is, well you can use the example of insulin, and insulin is um, a hormone produced um, normally in our bodies in the pancreas, which controls blood sugar levels. Someone who's got diabetes or type 1 diabetes uh, would not produce um, any insulin or wouldn't produce enough insulin. Um, the way it used to be, um, diabetic people used to be treated was they had to use insulin from other animals, things like pigs, um, which worked, but it wasn't ideal. It's a lot of hassle to get the um, to grind up the pancreas and things. There were a lot of ethical problems with it. Um, people didn't like uh, some people didn't like the idea of using animal hormones. Um, it's not very difficult nowadays to make this stuff, and it's used by um, made by using genetic modification. That's the genetic modification of uh, bacteria. So what you do is this, you would isolate um, on a, a section of human DNA, it's not very good is it, there's our DNA strand, you would find, you would locate where the um, gene for insulin was, and we know where that is now, and you basically just cut it out. How do you do that? You use enzymes, they're called restriction enzymes, but they cut out the, the bit of um, D, uh, DNA, the, the gene that you, you want. You would then take plasmids from out of um, a bacterium and again you would use enzymes, these restriction enzymes, and you would cut open this plasmid loop. You would then insert into there your section of DNA, your gene that you wanted, and the plasmids would then be taken back up by bacterium and you would grow them and hopefully, I should have used a better, different colour here, never mind. Those bacteria now have taken up the, um, the gene and they will actually start producing insulin for you. Now, there are a couple of problems with this. Um, basically, that not all of the bacteria will take up this plasmid. Um, it, it's actually quite low, it's maybe only 1% of them will, will actually reabsorb these plasmids back in. So you need to have a, a way to know which, because you, you're going to have millions and millions and millions of these bacteria. Um, you need to have a way to know which ones have taken them back on. You don't want to dump them all into your um, big fermenter and find out that there's only 1% of them are actually making the stuff you need. It'd be very uh, ineffective. So that's a no-no. So what do we do? Well, 
couple of ways you can do this kind of stuff. Um, sometimes we insert not just the, the gene, um, for example, our insulin gene, we might insert something like, let's use a different colour here, um, one technique is to use another gene that is visible uh, and, and something that's been done is from jellyfish, bizarrely enough, and some jellyfish make um, have a gene that makes a protein which fluoresces, gives off light, and you can tell if the, the, the bacteria has taken up this gene because it will also glow or it will fluoresce under light. So you can tell just by looking at it now, has it taken up the gene? And as long as you know that those two genes have been linked together, if it's glowing, you know that it must also have the insulin gene. That way you can isolate just those bacteria, grow them in dishes, grow millions of them, and they'll all have that gene. The other one is a bit more of a tricky thing to get your head around. Um, again, same idea, you make use of another gene, and this time, um, plasmids very often or one of the uses of plasmids is that they have sometimes a gene on them for antibiotic resistance. So if you know that a particular plasmid carries a gene for antibiotic resistance, um, let's put our insulin gene in there as well, you can work out that any plasmid with the antibiotic resistance um, is also carrying this um, insulin gene. Now it's a bit trickier than I'm, I'm suggesting here, but you don't need to go into any more depth um, than this at GCSE. The idea being that you would give your um, population of bacteria, you would douse them in these antibiotics, and any the ones that died off, you know can't be carrying that gene of antibiotic resistance, and so you wouldn't grow from those. You would keep the ones that are the survivors, and you would allow those ones to um, divide and grow and we now know that all of these are carrying our um, not just the antibiotic resistant gene but they must also be carrying the uh, insulin gene. There is um, another potential vector you can use which is viruses and some viruses um, can also be used to carry genes into bacteria. There's actually some viruses that um, attack bacteria weirdly enough called bacteriophages and they can be used to insert genes in as well, rather than going through this whole sort of plasmid process and cutting things up.